feet. Let's begin to worship God. Come on, if you know that God is good, just shout hallelujah. If you know that God is good, shout thank you, Jesus. Come on, say this.
Lord, you are good, Savior. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation. People from every nation. From generation to generation. something in your mic real quick. I can't hear you. Say something again. Say something else. I still can't hear you. Say something else. All right, now I can hear you. Here we go. Come on and bless the Lord with me. You say shout out bless. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Say the Lord with me now. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me, shout. Bless the Lord with me, say.
Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. We welcome you to our midweek service on tonight. Those of you listening to us on Zoom and live stream, we welcome you to praise the Lord with us in the house of God. Give God a hand praise. Amen. We want you to hit that share button. Tell somebody that we're here magnifying the Lord. Our scripture for tonight is Psalms 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. We want you to lift your hands as we pray. Father God, we thank you for this midweek service. We thank you for those on Zoom. We thank you for those on live stream. We thank you for the saints that are in your house tonight. Bless us as we go into this praise and worship service. Bless the speaker on tonight. Let your word go forth. And God, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God another hand praise as Minister Cynthia Smith comes and prays over our children. such a blessing to us you know God has good to them and wants them to be blessed so go before me and let's lift up the children of Emmanuel father we come before you in the name of Jesus thanking you for every child at, that comes into Emmanuel and those that are not here Lord we thank you for your goodness that surrounds them we thank you that you bless them we thank you that you want to see our children prosper Lord we ask that you go through the school systems in the name of Jesus and be that hedge of protection in there guard their hearts guard their minds guard their eyes Lord let them see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Don't let them see the destruction, Lord. Let them see good things. Let them be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Let them flourish and be warriors in their school, Lord. Let their minds be stayed upon Christ. Let them know that God is with them all the time, leading and guiding them. Lord, let them surrender their lives to Christ while they're young, Lord. Let them be humble and honorable to their parents, their grandparents, their teachers. Let them love on you, Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus, knowing that you are good to our children, Lord. But more than anything, draw them near close to you. Let them know that Christ is the Lord. And let them be guided by you, Lord. We thank you for our children. We ask that you bless them. You keep them protected. Don't let no harm come to them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you honor and glory, and we know that you hear us. And we say thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Somebody say bless.
for our speaker for tonight, which is none other, not last but not least either, Minister Leticia. Amen. Let's say amen as she comes. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, choir, don't leave yet. Not yet. So what happened was my pastor who is out of town, but of course watching. Hey, Pastor First Lady. Um, they are watching and loving you from afar. Um, I love the Simpkins. They are good friends and amazing pastors. Um, I've been with them for 17 years, working with their teenagers, and they are still vested in the success of the young people of our church. And there is nothing I would not do for them. So when my pastor said, hey, kid, I need you to come on, I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm, a, I'm here on assignment because I'm called to that couple. I know my assignment. I don't church hop. I don't look for the best choir. I know who I'm called to. I'm called to Carmel and Alvin Simpkins. I've been called for a long time, Hanjay. I was with Jordan before he got married. And Josh and Joe, because I know my assignment. Tonight, warriors in the house, we're going to talk about some things. You need to know where you are called. You need to know your assignment. Because I'm on, on assignment, and you know my pastor's watching, and I got to get the job what, y'all? What does he say? Oh, come on, warriors. What does my pastor say? You got to get the job what? You got to get it done. So on Sunday, our pastor asked for some of you to become Wednesday warriors. And so tonight, I'm going to honor you and celebrate you. And we're going to pray over you. So as Wednesday night warriors, I want you to come to the front right now. We're going to, yes, move out of your seats, my friends. You're going to come over because you are here every night faithfully. Come on, come to the front because you are starting something. We're just going to pray over you as you come. Because let me tell you, it's a lot to get off work and come to church. I don't know if you know. It's a lot to get off work, 
drive in traffic, brush off the day, brush off the craziness that happened at the office, and get to the house of the Lord. Yes. There's a lot of things that could have stopped you, but you made your way here. Amen. Amen. And so I want to pray over you. I want to honor you because it is no easy task coming in the middle of the week. I know. So raise your hands because you are the foundation as pastor and first lady's vision going forward to build the Wednesday night service to equip the saints. Heavenly Father, eternal God, I just thank you for every person at this altar. Lord Jesus, I just pray right now that you would bless them, Lord. You would bless them financially, emotionally, physically, mentally. I pray that you would give them favor on their jobs, favor with their bosses. I pray that you would order their steps, bless the work of their hands in the marketplace as they make their way to the church house, Father God, to support the vision of this house to move the gospel forward. And so I pray that you would bless them, bless their cars. I pray that you would bless and multiply this time back to them, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you would bless them in promotion. I pray that you would bless them in health. I pray that you would bless them in favor. Every person who is here, Father God, is a Wednesday warrior, Father God, standing on the word of God. And so I thank you for them. I pray over their families. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Thank you for the choir, Lord Jesus, that comes out on Wednesday night. Thank you for the musicians. I pray that you would bless their hands. Thank you for Judah and Elijah, Lord, as they come and just worship God and lift him up as young people. Every person in this room, I pray that you would bless them and order their steps. Give them a vision. Father God, I pray that you would breathe life into them. I pray tonight that they would shake off the day, Father God, as they enter your house. I pray that they would shake off what happened at work. I pray that they would shake off what happened at home to hear your word and be undistracted, Father God, and to be focused on the word that you have for them tonight. So, Minister Jordan, can you in the choir sing that song one more time? What you just sang, late in the midnight out. Yes, let's sing that one. Let's sing that one one more time. Blessed. Warriors, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed as you hey. come every Wednesday night. She said it right here. Uh, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn around. It's going to work in your favor. Somebody shout late. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. choir thank you young choir little simpakins y'all be getting it for jesus thank you girls thank you hallelujah hallelujah Are you guys ready for the word tonight warriors amen lord as i come before you i just pray father god right now that you would just wash my heart 
Father God, I ask forgiveness of all of my sins that I committed consciously or unconsciously as I come before your people to deliver the word that you've placed in my heart for them. Holy Spirit, I will follow you. I direct you, direct me to what to say, when to say it, how to say it. Father God, that the word would go forth in power and that it would land on soft, pliable hearts. We thank you for what you're going to do. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. I love my church family. I love the teenagers of this house. I love uh, the people in this house who have supported me for a trillion years. Um, that being um, um, Elder Ronnie and Cynthia, they have blessed me as I've worked with teenagers. Um, just all the people, um, the Harrises, Miss Mimi, if you're watching, um, Vanessa, just so many people have just really rallied around the teenagers to help us um, reach the next generation for Jesus. So um, as I was preparing for this message, and Pastor um, asked me to share today, I'm going to be piggybacking on the call that he made to you on Sunday. So on Sunday, Pastor and First Lady sent out an SOS, a call for some Wednesday Warriors. Can everybody say Wednesday Warriors? That's you. So as God placed that in their heart, they are really wanting to equip the saints, equip you, equip me for the last days. When I was a young girl, my grandma used to say, the Lord is coming soon. Does anybody ever, did their grandparents ever say that to you? That the Lord is coming soon, right? My grandma would be walking around the house singing I'm No Ways Tired. Do y'all remember that song? Did any of your elders sing that? So my grandma would be singing that and saying that, and she'd be like, you know what, baby? The Lord is coming soon. I was like, okay, Grandma. I was nine. I said, okay. 45 years later, if he was coming soon then, how much sooner do you think he's coming now? How much sooner? I want to ask you, church, that was 45 plus years ago. Are you ready? Have you done everything that God has asked you to do personally to spread the gospel? Saints, it's time to sound the alarm. We need everyone to wake up. Everybody say wake up. If I had to title this me message, it would be called Wake Up. Let's go. We're going to work our Bibles this evening. We're going to go ahead and quickly turn to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. For those of you who cheat on your electronic device, you know, I like an old-fashioned Bible, feel the papers through your fingers, right? You cheaters with the portable electronic devices with your Bible app, you can go there too. You can scroll there if you like. God's Word says in 1 Peter 5, 8, and I'm reading out of my little youth Bible that I use when me and the teens are together, it says this, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The Amplified says, be sober, as well balanced and self-disciplined, um, be always alert and cautious. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. Wednesday Warriors, tonight, I want to let you know that lion, that old serpent, the devil, is looking to devour those in your household, those in your neighborhood, those in your city. Are you ready? I need you to wake up. So who can be a warrior? Because that's those are big shoes to fill. Because when I think warrior, I think like David. Um, I think uh, a mighty man. I think bloody, like to fight, good at fighting. Who can be a warrior? Who is going to fight off the enemy? Who is going to fight for this nation? Who is going to fight for the city? Who is going to fight for your family if you don't? You, people of God, you are the warriors for this day and age. You have been called for such a time as this. This is your time. This is your place. We need warriors everywhere to say, wake up. Church, say, wake up. 
So let's talk about what the definition of a worry is, because I love definitions, because, you know, I need it made clear and plain. Just say it. I like it straight, right? So by definition, a warrior is a soldier or fighter, someone who has shown great courage or aggressiveness. Another definition says, a warrior is one who sacrifices himself for the good of others he is tasked to care for or defend those who cannot defend themselves. A warrior puts themselves on the line for the people they serve. A warrior is focused, completely disciplined, and aggressive, not out of selfishness, but on behalf of others. You read about warriors in the Bible. They're listed in Hebrews 11. You have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Joshua, and the army of Israel. When they marched around Jericho, you have Rahab, the prostitute, David, Gideon, Samson, Peter, Mary Magdalene. Paul, I could go on and on about the warriors that the Bible talks about. In Hebrews 11, 33 and 34, it says, because of their faith, they took over kingdoms. They received the blessings that God has promised. They shut the mouth of lions. They put out great fires. Their weaknesses was turned to strength. They became powerful in battle. They beat back armies from other countries. These are the men and the women in the Bible that were considered warriors. Hmm. Well, who are the warriors in 2023? Hmm. Some black people say it could be T.D. Jakes. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, it might be Joel Osteen, maybe Joyce Meyer, maybe Keon Anderson, maybe it's Beth Moore. No, oh, wait, wait, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's Tony Evans, because those are the way, maybe it's Pastor Alvin. I mean, he be getting it, right? Uh, no, beloved, it's you. You are the warriors for 2023. You have been called to such a time as this. Your name is going to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Your name is going to be said about what mighty things that you did. You're like, little me, I work, I work at an airline. I really do work at an airline. <laughs> I, how am I going to be a warrior? I, I'm a single mom. I got divorced. I never expected to be divorced, but it just happened. I waited all my life to get married, then got divorced. Failure. Man, got a temper. Failure. I got tough tongue. Failure. Impatient. Failure. Sometimes I like people, sometimes I don't. Failure. Sometimes I don't like your kids. Failure still called a warrior according to God you're still called a warrior no matter what it says God has called each of us to be warriors because we all have an assignment what is your assignment God isn't looking for perfection all of these people that I mentioned in the Bible they have a crazy backstory and they are extremely flawed I'm gonna say something you tell me which person in the Bible you think it is. All right, y'all ready? Y'all wake up. Wake up, Wednesday Warriors. This person was an adulterer and a murderer. Who was that? Ding, 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 David, you are correct. This warrior in the Bible was a drunkard. Noah, this person in the Bible was a murderer and he had anger issues. Hmm, who do you think? Who hit the rock? Hmm, right? Who hated the people he was called to deliver and ran in the opposite direction? Jonah. Remember he was called to speak to the Ninevites and he said, Heck, you know, I can't stand them. You do not, they do not deserve grace. Remember that? Who had a thing for foreign women? Yes. Oh, Wednesday Warriors, you look good and you sound good. Who started following the religion of some of his wives? Solomon. Mm-hmm. 
There is an old saying that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the what? The called. All of these men and women were flawed, but God used them mightily to do great things. He is going to use your backstory to do great things. If we all knew everything that you did, you might fit some of this list. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I could fill in some people in this church, they name on this list. But I digress. Second Corinthians 3, 5 says, in ourselves, we are not able to claim anything for ourselves. The power to do what we do comes from God. He has given us the power to serve under a new covenant. The covenant is not based on the written law of Moses. It comes from the Holy Spirit. The written law kills, but the Spirit gives life. Wednesday Warriors, God's grace is all you need. For when you are your weakest, he is his strongest. Come on now. Look, I work with you, but I got a little something-something. I got a little something-something. When you're at your weakest, God is the strongest. When you're in the worst you, when I'm the worst me that I would be so embarrassed that you saw, that's when God reigns the most in my life. When you're at your worst, God is like, hmm, okay, that's when I can shine the brightest. How did all those men and women get to be called mighty men of faith and warriors? Because God qualified them, not based on anything, just because he loved them. He needed them, and they were called for their time, and you're called for this time. All of us have an assignment or a circle that you're supposed to affect, impact. What is it? Who is it? Is it? people on your job? Is it your family? Is it your cousins? Is it the neighborhood? Who are you called to? Who is your assignment? You know how you know what your assignment is? It's the thing that irks you the most. When you hear it, there's something in your spirit that says something ain't right and somebody should do something about that. The thing that irks you the most is normally the thing that you're called and assigned to fix. What is it in you that makes you go, you know what, somebody should do something? Lord, I said somebody should do something. He's saying, you should do something. <laughs> pastor, somebody needs to fix this. Fix some, pastor, somebody needs to help with the traffic out there. Because, you know, folks be coming in. You get out there and go, go fix traffic. You know what? I wish somebody would help with them teenagers because you should help with the teenagers. You know, someone needs to help the men get together and do some retreats for them. You should do that. You know, the women, they need a ladies' retreat. That would be such a great idea to go away on the mountains. You should go talk to First Lady about that. Everyone's looking around to know who's going to do it. Someone should clean up this church after service. You! <laughs> you point at everybody, and God's pointing at you. You know what, someone should really go do something about the homelessness in Denver. It's out of control. It's out of control. It's out of control. Wednesday Warrior, you <laughs> need to do something about the homelessness. You know, someone needs to do something with the politics. I just do not agree. We need to have faith-based um, ideas and faith-based you maybe should run for city council. Where do you think God's taking you? Your story is not done, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are. Until he calls you home, your story's not done. 
there's work for you to do. Wednesday Warrior, you're here to get pumped up, gassed up, shaken off, encouraged to get back, go to work, and deal with your boss tomorrow so you don't lose your job and cuss them out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for the spirit of non-cussing. I thank you that you just protect my mind, Jesus. Holy Ghost, I need you to touch me because I'm about to cuss in the holy language. Come on now. You come to church so that you can go out and affect the world. Am I talking to the right how? I, maybe it's me. I, you know, maybe it's just me. It's not you. But I need, I pray that every day. Lord, help. Thank you for my job. Because I think I'm going to lose it today. Because I'm about to say something to my supervisor who don't know what they're doing. You know, Lord, keep my mind. Right? When you come on Wednesdays, the word is designed to encourage your heart to fill you up so you go out there and get the job done. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Why do we need warriors? We need warriors who know that the fight we are talking about is not in the natural. It's supernatural. Come on now, shut up. The Holy Ghost gave me this. I was like, dude, shut up. That's good. If you could peel back the natural layer and look into the supernatural, you would fall to your knees. It would scare you to death. That's what we're dealing with. We need warriors who know that the fight we are talking about is not natural. In 2 Timothy 3, 1, it says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Wait a minute. I think we're in terrible times right now. If this is terrible, there's more terrible to come? Warriors, there's more terrible. What if there was war on our streets, in our neighborhoods, with guns and bombs? Are you ready? Are you ready? Church, the devil is not playing games. The devil is not playing games with our young people. He is out to kill, steal, and destroy them. He wants to steal their destiny. He is taking no hold bars. He's not fighting fair. Innocence is not a thing. He steals it. Naive, not a thing. He takes it. He exposed them to every file, image, song. It's just music, mom. Wait, what I just heard was bleep, 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 bleep. I asked the young people, if I took your playlist and played it for the church, would you be embarrassed? They said, no, don't play my playlist. <sighs> that devil is crafty. He's sneaking in any way he can. Our, we, for we wrestle not against what? But against what? You better say that. People in church getting fat, sitting back, letting Pastor Alvin do all the work. And he's calling you. His job is to equip the saints. He's equipping you. What are you doing with it? Are you getting out there fighting? Are you sharpening your weapons? Come on. You are because you're Wednesday Warriors and you're here. So you know I need to go in and get pumped up. Um, I asked um, the Cliffords. They are... I've known Esther Clifford since I was in my 20s, and I'm in my 50s. I've known her for, for a long time. I asked um, John Clifford, who was in the military, to come. Uh, Mr. Clifford, can you come share with me for just a second? I asked him, because he is military. Um, Elder Harris, can you use this mic right here? <sighs> Mr. John, I was asking him, how do warriors or soldiers, which we are, we are soldiers, for the Lord, how do we know that we're ready for the battle? Um, I think when you're prepared, you have to be fully prepared. You have to be fully prepared. Yes. Okay. What else? 
I think you have to practice and get ready and just know that it can happen at any time. Mm. So you may not have any notice. Wait a minute. So when my sister is in a coma, I didn't have any notice. It was time to pray. Yes. I didn't have time to prepare. Absolutely. I had to pray on time and on target right then. So soldiers got to be prepared because you don't know what's going to happen. That's right. So how, and we got to practice. Practice. How do we, come on people of God, how do I practice here for the battle out there? How do I practice? How do I get ready? I, I better pray. I better get in my word. I better praise God inhabits the praises of his people. That's direct access to God. So on Sundays and on Wednesdays, we're getting prepared to go out there and get the job done. Because we don't know. When the car hits your car and the car spins and the car is spinning and you're saying, Jesus, 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 are you prepared? Are you prepared? when they call you and tell you your cousin had a heart attack six months older than me this year not prepared are you prepared are you prepared to walk your family through it pastor alvin has told us many times you might be the one called to walk your family through that time yes. you they're not available right now, but you are available, Wednesday Warrior. You go to the hospital. You plead the blood. You pray for the healing. You help the family heal and walk through it. You're called for such a time as this. Yes. We got to prepare. Yes. So we got to prepare. We got to practice. And what's one more thing? You got to pray got to pray. You got to pray as a soldier. You got to pray. You got to pray for the protection. Real soldiers on the field be praying. They want to go home. You are praying for the soldiers on the field. John, how many young men and women have you seen that had just the fear of God in their face, just so scared? Oh, Tremendous amount. Tremendous amount. Everyone is scared. <laughs> Everybody's scared. But some people are petrified. Some I think. people are scared. Very, very scared. But others are petrified. Yes. Some people are scared, but they you wouldn't really know they were scared. Right. Because they can kind of they're good at They've prepared. They're prepared. They're practice. They practice. And they fake it till they make it. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Give John Clifford a hand and my family. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I wanted you to hear it from a military man because it applies for us. Although we're not in the military, same principles. You got to prepare. You got to practice. You got to practice your praise on Sunday. <laughs> so you, when you're in the struggle, you can sing. <laughs> it don't, you don't have to be up here to praise. You got to be in your car and praise. <laughs> Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. That's what Minister Teresa says. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. And no matter how you feel, speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Listen, it's you who got to sing that to yourself. It's you who got to praise through. Stop playing. The 
choir is equipping you to give you a praise. It don't have to be pretty. It just got to go up to God. It don't have to be on note. It's just got to get to the throne of heaven. It got to, it don't have to be in tune. It's just got to reach the, reach the throne. Come on. Come on. You got to praise over your family. The word and the song is spoken word. That's what song is, is the spoken word with the music. Right? Right? Jean, did I do okay? I love me some minutes to Teresa because I'd be like, song, times, you. Come on. I'd be like, come on, Mrs. Teresa, get it. Come on. That, she will light you up. Doesn't she light you up when she sings that song? And you start getting like, I think I can sing that in the shower. <laughs> right? You can sing that. Okay, Elder Harris, I want you to sing that. Come on. Sometime. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Come on now. Some Come on, Wednesday Warriors. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No matter how you feel, speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. James, come here. Yes. You know, why am I doing this? You don't have to be in the choir to sing your praise. Sometimes you have to be courage and encourage yourself. And sometimes you have to be victory doing your test. No matter how you feel, she covered and you will be healed. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. And sing for them when they can't find the song, when they don't feel it, when it hurts too much, when it hurts too bad, and they don't have a voice, and they can't see God, and they can't see hope. And they used to be a warrior, but they're pretty beat up. You needed that. We needed that. Miss yeah. yes. Baco, come here, please. Jeannie Baco, um, I had the pleasure of ministering to her daughters who are now married with children. I've known the Bacos for a long time. Miss Jeannie, can you sing that song? Sometime you have to speak with rage yourself. Sometime you have to speak victory during your test. No matter how you feel, speak the word that you will be. Speak over yourself. Courage yourself in the Lord. Wednesday Warriors, do you know that praise gets God's attention? And you don't have to be at church. You can be in your car. You can be at home. You can be in the hospital. God has called you for such a time as this. As I get ready to close, I want you to know the enemy is in full rank to steal our faith. He wears us down. He beats us up. He makes us hopeless. 
We all have battles. Everyone in this room has had some battles. Someone passes away, someone gets sick, lose a job, lose a child, you lose a marriage and you just didn't see it coming. So Minister Tisha, how do we fight as Wednesday Warriors? Consistency, faithfulness, as you've clearly demonstrated. Many of you come every Wednesday, even when there's three people, four people, 10 people, 20 people, that faithfulness. You also know your weapons. You have the full armor of God. You put on the full armor of God every day, Wednesday Warriors. Again, you need to attack those principalities, those powers, those assignments. Use your praise. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Put on a garment of praise. As a warrior, one of your weapons is praise. So I don't care if anybody in your section on Sunday is singing loud. You better sing loud because you have an assignment. I don't care if you like, you better scoot over. Right? You got to pray if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven and do what? Heal their land. Warriors. John, basics. Just basics to win the battle. And we also got to fast. Push the plate, don't eat late. Sometimes you got to say no to them neck bones. No to that mac and cheese. Not on Thanksgiving, but after that. <laughs> you got to equip yourself. You got to get ready. Because the devil is playing for keeps. And you have been called to help equip other people to fight the battle because it's real. Mental illness is real. Depression is real. Anxiety is real. Hopelessness is real. Fear is real. Sadness is real. Loss is real. If not you, who? We're not the biggest church in town, but we're solid. Our pastors are solid. They love God, and they know God, and they know how to equip the saints, and they know how to pray you through. Stand on your feet, church. Wednesday Warriors, did you can meet me at the altar as we close? One more time, please, and thank you. Hallelujah. Are you encouraged? I hope you're encouraged. I hope I reminded you. Yes, you, little old you, that God has called you. God has called the Wednesday Warriors to pray for your pastors. We're praying for our pastors right now as they're away. We're praying for you where you are to be the light in a dark place, whether it's in your office or in your home, you have a job to do. What is it? Don't you leave this world without fulfilling the call of God on your life. You are a warrior. Just raise your hands. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, eternal God, we just thank you for the word tonight, Father God. Lord, we accept the call to be Wednesday warriors, to walk with our pastor, to equip the saints, to change a dying world with the love of Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just equip us. Father God, send us to the right people at the right time with the right message. Open our spiritual eyes to see the snares and the traps of the enemy. Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone in this room. I, Father God, just 
ask that we draw a hedge of protection around them as they go from here to home, Father God. Give them sweet rest. Give them sweet peace, Father God. Give them the desires of their heart. As a church, equip us. Father God, you said you looked for a man among them who would stand in the gap, but you found no one. And we say, here we are, God. Use us to touch Denver. Use us to touch Aurora. Use us to touch our city. Use us, God, and all of our flaws and all of our failures. We love you, God. And so we say, use us. We accept the challenge. We will answer the call. And everyone said, amen. Amen. What a word. What a word. Amen. Are you ready? Wake up. Amen. What's the subject? Wake up. It's time to wake up. Amen. We enjoy Minister Letitia. Give her another hand. Amen. Amen. It's time to wake up because it's offering time. Amen. Everybody wake up. Amen. Ushers, you may come and give each one an envelope. Everybody, amen, give something to the Lord. Amen. He's worthy, isn't he? He's worthy of our tithe and our offerings. Amen. Because he blesses us every day with breath in our bodies. God lets you breathe today. Amen. He woke you up this morning. Could have let you sleep, sleep on into death, but he gave you life. So we ought to give back to him. Amen. The Bible tells us in Psalms 67 and 6, then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. That's a promise. Amen. It's easy to give when you know. The promises in God's word. He promises to open you the windows of heaven. According to Malachi chapter 3. We read it all the time. Amen. And pour you out a blessing that there will what? Be no room for you to receive it. The Bible also says in Psalm 67 and 7. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. This is God's word. So when you can bask in God's word and give your tithe, give your offering, it is a blessing unto the Lord. Amen. You can give any kind of way. It's, the, it's on the board. You can give by text. You can give on your phone. You can give even here in the church. Amen. There are several ways that we have in this church that you are able to give your tithe and your offerings. Amen. So it's easy for you to give unto the Lord when you know that the earth yields her increase. Earth yields her increase on your job. That's the earth yielding her increase. Amen. We, they say money doesn't grow on trees, but amen, trees make money. Isn't that right? Amen. Paper. Amen. So it does. Amen. So we thank God for those of you who have your gifts. You may stand up and rest on your feet right now. Hold your gifts up to God. Father God, we thank you for this word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that it's time for us to wake up. But, Lord, it's also time to bless you with our tithes, with our offerings. And, Lord, we thank you for our gifts. Bless those that give tonight. Bless them a thousandfold, O oh God. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour it out in their lives in every area of their life. And God will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You may bring your gifts to the altar. Made a way. 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Was that not a word from the Lord tonight? Amen, Lord, amen, we say thank amen. you for that word. That, that, that word was sent from the Lord directly for us tonight here. Everyone in the sanctuary, everyone on live screen, everyone who heard that word, it says we, we are here tonight to say thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord. Lord. It says for two or three are gathered, so he is in the midst. I can feel his presence tonight. I can feel his presence Amen. right here, yeah. right now. Yeah. So, Lord, so we're going to give you the priestly covenant blessing. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and, and, and to his son, saying unto them, On this wise, that shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and the yeah. Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And they shall put their name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. I will, he says, I will bless the children of Emmanuel, the prayer warriors of Emmanuel. All those who heard his word, he will bless them. Lord, we say thank you for the word today, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yes. We thank you for your tender, loving care, Lord. Yeah. We thank you because you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten Son that whom shall believe in him shall not perish. So, Lord, we lift you up. We glorify your holy name. It's by your grace and your mercy that we are here tonight, and we say thank you for our pastor and our first lady and every member of Emmanuel Christian Center and everyone who heard the word tonight, and we give you all the praises and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on. Shy, Has really been. 